I often get the question how I make t-shirts. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it in this video. Basically, you need a shirt, you need an embroidery hoop, you need scissors to cut off stabilizer and the thread, you need a non-woven stabilizer for the bottom of the garment, and a water-soluble one on top. You also need this to mark where your design goes, and you get this with a brother embroidery machine. And this is what I use to mark it with. So after you've done that, you have to lay down your shirt on a flat surface area. I would recommend washing and ironing your clothes before you embroider them, so when you hand them to the customer, they get the product that will stay exactly the same after they wash it. So this is what the shirt actually looks like, but just for the sake of the video, I would keep the brightness high. I really recommend that if you have a brother machine that you use this, because it's really useful. Uh, you see the middle part that I'm going to point out in a bit? You want that to be in the middle of the color of your shirt. So I will zoom in just so you have a proper idea of where to put this and where to mark it. As you can see, the part that is in the middle has to be right under the seam. In my experience, that's the best placement. So if you want to design in the middle, that's where you would mark, so the design goes around it. For this design, however, I want it on the left chest pocket, so I put it on the right side of the shirt from my perspective. I know that if you're not used to embroidery, then you would see this and think that it's way too centered, but that is not the case. It's kind of hard to eyeball it because it shows you the center of the design and not the design around it. This is also marking just for the front side of the shirt, but I need to put the stabilizer on the back. So to know exactly where I need to put it, I use this needle. And the way that I put the needle through the shirt, uh, when I turn it around, then I know exactly where I need to put my stabilizer. I don't think I've shown you this in the beginning of the video, because you can also use a needle to get the same thing, but I use a glue spray to make sure that the non-woven stabilizer that I put on the back is steady. Here you can see that I actually placed my stabilizer, but I take it off again because I realized that the edges aren't sprayed properly. I do this just to make sure that when I turn the shirt inside out, or when it's embroidering, that it doesn't move around, that it just stays at its spot. You also don't need to worry about the glue spray staining your shirt or your hoodie or whatever you're embroidering on, because if you wash it, then it just disappears anyway. Here you can see that my marking disappeared because of the glue spray. So before you take off your needle, just make sure you know where exactly you marked it, because when you're going to hoop it, it's going to be quite difficult to know exactly where you put that needle. You don't need to glue the top stabilizer. The reason for that is that the initial stitches will keep it in place. So this is the most important and the most tedious part of embroidery. If you've done it quite a few times and it gets easy, but at first it's frustrating because you don't want it too loose, you also don't want it too tight. The reason why this is so important is this is where you exactly make sure that your design isn't crooked. If you mess this up, then your design will come out crooked and you will most likely have to throw out your garment or place a patch on top. It's just a lot of effort that you don't want to do. Something useful that I've learned is I look really closely in the t-shirt and then you can see the seams of the fabric and those are straight from top to bottom. So you can use that as a frame of reference for your embroidery hoop. So after you're sure that you put it straight, you place the hoop inside the hoop at the bottom and you straighten it up. Just make sure that there isn't any excess fabric on the sides. It has to be nice and clean. So if you look at these lines that I will make, and my nails aren't dirty, it's just the glue spray instead of the bottom that's allowing me to do this. Uh, you can see that at least my design isn't vertically crooked because of the straight lines that I see on the fabric. So that's just a useful tip that you can use as well. You really have to make sure that when you place it in the embroidery machine, that the embroidery spot is entirely clean and it just consists of the area that you want to embroider on. If you don't do that, basically what will happen is that a piece of the top will stitch to the piece of the bottom of the garment and then you can throw it out. So this is just me picking out the design. If you want to know more about this and how I made this, let me know in the comments. I would recommend that in the beginning you don't think about making your own designs just yet, but you pay others to do so. You can find people that do this very cheap on Fiverr. So as I said, you just need to put the top stabilizer on before it starts to embroider, so it stays in place. The reason why stabilizer is important is because fabric stretches out, but the stabilizer doesn't, so it keeps your design nice and crispy. So this is what it should look like right before you embroider, where your shirt is spread out so the embroidery space only consists of the area that you want to embroider on, your top stabilizer is there as well. If you want to be very safe, you can use these clips to hold this in place, but it's not really necessary since it's a small design, so I won't do that this time. If you've done everything properly and you put the needle down, then the buttons should turn green and you're ready to embroider.
After you're done embroidering, you just flip this switch and it allows you to take it out. It's a bit easier with both hands, but because I was recording, I was struggling a bit. Make it a habit to loosen up your hoop before you take out your garment, because these can break easily. So once you've taken it out of the hoop, this is what you should be left with, and you can just tear out the rest of the water soluble stabilizer on top, and this is what you should have left. So what you see now is the back with the non-woven stabilizer, and a lot of people don't really put much effort into making this look nice, but I usually do. I take out the loose threads, I cut them off, hold the lighter against it, and I also take off the rest of the stabilizer, just because I think it differentiates me from other people who do the same thing. What you will often hear is that this stabilizer keeps the design in place, but I don't believe that's the case. I think the necessary part of the stabilizer is already underneath the stitching, so you can just take it off and it will look like this. After you've done that, you're basically done. Uh, you just need to wash it one more time to get rid of the stabilizer on top. The reason why I would also iron it is because it looks nice. Customers will also appreciate you putting in the extra effort. I will also make a big design on the back, and this was my first tutorial, so if I miss anything, let me know, and I'll make sure to include that in the next video.